Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden video. So it is officially after our last frost date here in Southern Alabama, which is fabulous. Now we haven't had frost here for almost a month. So I have been cheating a little and planting some things out in the garden that I probably shouldn't. Uh, but it's fine. I mean, look at the daisies, they're great. So today I have a very exciting video, planting foxgloves. So as you know, foxgloves are a biannual, which means you have to plant them almost every year to have a solid show because they only live for two years and traditionally they bloom the second year. So they don't even bloom the first year. Now there are a few varieties that bloom the first year, including the Camelot mix, which is from Johnny's Seeds. Now mom and I started, I will link it below, a whole bunch of these and milk jugs in November, which if you start them in November, by the time your last frost date comes around, they're huge. But we had a la huge freeze for three days this winter and forgot to go check our milk jugs. And so only one of our foxgloves survived and we found a bunch at one of our local nurseries. It is our favorite little gym here in Southern Alabama because he grows things, everything from seed and his prices are super reasonable. The nursery we love just down the street from us has foxgloves. They were gorgeous, but they were almost $30 for one foxglove. And he charges $3 for these. So obviously mom and I got a bunch of them and we're going to plant them out with my one that survived. I did start 19 jugs of foxgloves, the Camelot variety in January, which should be ready to plant out in the next two weeks. They're a lot smaller than this, um, but they will grow and they will bloom for us. All of these should bloom for us this year and next year. So by planting things in November, and January in our milk jugs, it really just means we will have kind of a succession planting. Most fox gloves that come up with, I have one coming back from last year here, up here, I have a bunch down in the other garden. Um, when they come up naturally from the year before, they will be really big and beautiful the second year with lots of bloom stalks, and that's fabulous. Um, but last year, you know, I planted a bunch right in spring. These new ones that are coming up will bloom in spring, but if you keep planting them the entire season, you will have foxgloves all season long. You just have to have them to plant. So our ones that are smaller now will bloom for us a month or two after these. And so then we'll have more foxgloves all season long. So mom and I are kind of loving that thought and thinking maybe we will keep going planting with our November and January's um, seeds, even in the future. Technically, you could do this every two years since they are biannuals, but like I said, that second year of foxgloves is going to be a much bigger, showier bloom, even with the ones that bloom the first year. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I have one here, one here. So we're gonna plant four more in each spot for groupings of five. And then I'm gonna plant three on the other side of the tree. And then in a two weeks to a month, when our baby foxgloves are ready, we will interplant all of these with the babies. I've got probably 30 or 40, way more, since I'm not buying them for $3 a pop, I bought a thing of seeds for $5 um, from that group of milk jugs. And if the rest of this guy's brothers had survived, I'd have 30 or 40 of these right now. But Mom and I are currently working on plans to build her a greenhouse, and then our babies can live in the greenhouse in December and January. We'll have much less problems. But for now, let's get planting. I'm just excited to be actually planting annuals in the ground. You excited, Biddy?
All right, so I have one foxglove here that's coming back. He was doing great, and now he's on the struggle bus just a bit, but hopefully he'll pick up. And then we've got one, two, three, four. I'm not sure if this is a foxglove coming back or a weed, but I would rather pull a mature weed than a baby foxglove. So we're going to leave it for now and just see in the next couple weeks. It won't hurt anything to leave it until we're sure. So for now, go ahead. And mom and I planted her foxgloves yesterday. So I already know that these are super root bound. He did a really good job growing them. So I am going to have to, uh, tease those roots a little bit. We're going to see if I need my auger. I plant foxgloves here every year. This will be the third year. So the soil is pretty well worked. And that's it. Dig your hole, put in your fertilizer, tease your roots, plant your plant. And then of course we will come in and water these all in. But if you saw my installing drip video, you know that we have dripped this entire area. So they are good to go. They will be getting daily water.
Oh, this one's got a lot of roots. A lot, a lot. All right, I got all four planted. So now I have five little foxgloves right here. I think I planted, he had a mix of the mixed Camelot, which is everything I planted was mixed and the Camelot white. But the Camelot mix has white, purple, and kind of a peachy color in it. So these will come up a variety of different colors and they should be really pretty. I'm very excited for even just these five. Typically I only plant three here. So we've already got more than normal. And then once the rest are ready, we will have double at least. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and pop over to the other tree. We'll put y'all on fast time. I have seven more to plant. I'm so excited. Just a little caveat. If you've never planted foxglove before, they are poisonous to you, to your animals, to your babies, to everyone. Um, I've planted them for years. My mom planted them my entire childhood. They are her favorite flower on the planet. Um, obviously, you can see my, uh, my little dog, Bitty Bitty. Bitty Bitty. She always is out here gardening with me. She literally hangs out right here under this porch next to the foxgloves. She's never bothered them. They've never hurt her. She's never tried to eat them. Almost any plant is poisonous flowers if you ingest it. I mean, I have a whole grove of lilies that are very poisonous to cats. Um, poinsettias are very poisonous to cats. So, you know, if you're super worried about it, don't plant them. I am not worried about it. I don't have anyone in my life that uh, would be a risk with these. And so I'm fine with it. But just so you know, Anytime I plant foxgloves, I get people in the comments saying, hey, did you know those are poisonous? Yeah. I'm not the only one who plants them. Everyone plants them. That is okay with it. If you're not okay with it, 
then plant something else. There's hundreds of flowers, but I'm gonna go plant the other seven I have because I love them. Let's go. All right, so we've got three foxgloves tucked in back here behind the glads. And then you can see, same as on the other side, we have lilies popping up all throughout here. And so the lilies are summer plants. Those will come up in later May, June, July, when the foxgloves are pretty much done for the season. So again, interplanting trying to interplant things as much as I can so that you have seasonal interest for the entire year and not just for pockets of the year. So here we have more glads back here. Those are summer. And then foxglove, 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 foxglove. And then you can see anywhere there's a white tag here. So white tag, white tag, white tag, white tag. They go all the way down here. These are all lilies. There's even a there's one popping up right there. So we will uh, continue to add foxgloves all the way around as they grow up from the milk jugs. I do think I'm going to go ahead and pull both of these hydrangeas. I, this one I know is dead. Planted this one to replace this one when I thought this one was dead and it's never come back. This is one mom propagated for me. This one should have lived. I bought it from the nursery. You can see it still has the tag. So I'm not quite sure. I planted it at the same time as this one, and this one's fine. I'm not sure why this one's not loving its life, but uh, I think I'm going to just pull them both out and replace them while it's still early in the season, and he'll have a good chance at a head start. But that's really irrelevant to this video. And then last but not least, box gloves down here. So you can see, I typically center these on the berry bath, but our first one is all the way down here. And he's little, so we centered them off of that. One, two, three, four, five. Still not sure if this is a weed or a box club. And then you can see where we would normally center them to here. I've got some ranunculus on this side going crazy. The ranunculus on this side are not quite as big, so we'll see. But the ranunculus will bloom and then go out of season. And so we will just keep filling in with our other foxgloves as they get ready. And it, I mean, not everything has to be perfectly symmetrical. So it will be pretty with all the foxglove anyways. And then we've got glads and iris back here. For the border, that's the goal, is foxglove, iris, lilies, um, glads. I love all those tall spikes of color at the back of a bed, so. Hope you liked this video. If you want to go back and check out how I planted up my milk jugs with the foxglove seeds at the very beginning of the season, I will link that video down here. In the meantime, I'm going to go take a break because uh, I still have more stuff to plant this afternoon. So I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.